Hi, Glyn here, back with another video for you. And this week I wanna show you how I created the smoke effect in the picture that you can see on screen now. Now there's actually two ways we're gonna do it. The one way is with a filter that's built into Photoshop and the other is using some brushes. Okay, so the first way we'll go through making this smoke or fog effect is actually just using a filter that's been in Photoshop for a long time. And there's only really just a few short, quick steps to it. Now on the screen at the moment, you can see the final image, but what we'll do is we'll just get rid of that so that we've got this image here, which is where the original photograph has been partly retouched, but now we can actually see it a lot clearer for adding in this smoke. And in fact, in the final retouch, that was done before the coloring anyway. So we'll go from this point. Right, well first of all add a blank layer to the top of the layer stack and then what we need to do is look at our foreground and background colours. Now over in the toolbar over on the left hand side there we can see that the actual foreground and background colour, one's red and one's black. We actually need them to be their default of black and white so just press D on your keyboard. Now it doesn't actually matter which way round they are, it doesn't matter if the black's the foreground or the white's the foreground, that is irrelevant so long as you have black and white colours across either the background or the foreground. Then all we're going to do is just go to the filter menu at the top of the screen and then go to the render and then choose clouds. Now what happens then is we get this kind of like mottled effect filling the whole of the layer. We've got a mixture of black, white, white and different tones of grey and it doesn't look that realistic but there's one real simple thing we can do now to help that. All I'm going to do is go and get my rectangular marquee from the toolbar and kind of go towards the middle of the screen now and drag out a kind of rectangular shape. It doesn't have to be perfect but a rectangular kind of shape like so. So hopefully you can see there we've got the marching ants in the center area just there. Then I'm going to go to the layer menu, choose new and then layer via copy. There's also the keyboard shortcut there of command or control J and when we do that that basically will put that little selected area, create a copy of it and put it up onto its own layer. So we can actually get rid of the layer that had all of that effect in it there. All right, so with that selected area now that's been put onto its own layer active in the layers panel, we're just gonna to go to free transform. So we'll get edit and free transform. We then get the transform handles and I'm just gonna drag out on the transform handles now so that it actually fills the whole of the picture here. So to do that, so it grows out from the center, I'm just holding down my shift and option or shift and alt key. Okay, so press enter, now we've committed. Now the problem obviously now is we can't see the person below. So you've got a few choices here. One of them could be that you come over to the layers panel and just use blend mode. So you could maybe go for something like overlay or you could actually go for something like soft light. But I don't like that way of doing it because it does have a little bit more contrast than I want, but mainly because it's uh, the way it affects it when you have skin tone. So it doesn't really like, I don't really like it like that. So we'll change it back to normal. And all I'm going to do is just use opacity. So we'll drag down the opacity now. We'll take it down to somewhere around about 25%, something like that for now. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the layers panel and add a layer mask. I've got a white layer mask, meaning we can still see the effect, but then I'm gonna go over to my brushes, simple round, a uh, soft brush, so we've got 0% hardness there. I'm using a black foreground colour. Let's just click on the brushes here to make sure we've got no settings in there on the brush presets either, so we're okay for that. A simple round brush, uh, and I'm gonna change the opacity now. Rather than being at 100%, as we can see in the options at the top of the screen, I'm just gonna take it down to something around about 20% or what have you. And then all I'll do is I'll just come in and uh, keep painting random strokes over our male subject here. And the reason for this is I don't want the effect to be covering him completely. If I kind of brush over at varying kind of places, random strokes at this 20% and build it up in some areas, it's gonna help him look as if the smoke is around him as well, as opposed to looking like a 2D flat layer smoke effect placed on top of him. So now we can see when we turn it on and off, the effect is there, so you can see a little bit on his clothes. Let's paint that away just a little bit but now it actually looks as if we've got that nice smoke in there, but it's actually within him, so it's kind of circling around him as well. If I hold down my Alt or Option key, click on the layer mask, you can see the kind of effect that we're actually getting there. The dark areas, the gray areas is where we've kind of started to paint away that effect. And then obviously, because it's on opacity here, we can change the strength of it, just to dial it into whatever kind of taste we want. So that's the first way of doing it. The second way involves brushes. So let's take a look at that one. 
All right then, so for this second way, what I need to do is dive over to a web browser. So I'm gonna to go to Google here, and what I'm gonna actually do is type in explosion brushes. And it's really important how I spell that there. So if I just put my cursor over it, let's zoom in so you can see, we've got explosion, but spelt without the E. Now I'll put a link into what that actually finds, because when you type that in explosion brushes, you'll get the first option will be this one, explosion brush set, free Photoshop brushes at Brush Easy. So when I click on that, that'll take us to the page where we get this free download. And on the left-hand side, we can see the example here where they've used one of the brushes in this set to create this smoke and that's been created by like an explosion or fire. But we can use it to create nice smoke like you saw in that original picture just a few moments ago. So when you come to this link, again, that's gonna be in the description of this video, click on the free download section, download those brushes, and then when you're in Photoshop, go to your brushes, and then just come down to your brush presets, click on the little cog icon in the top right-hand corner, and choose load brushes. That will then load the brushes in, and you'll find them right at the bottom of your brush presets. And you can see there's quite a few here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven or eight brushes that you'll get in that free brush set. Now when you first go to use these, what you'll find is they don't actually look that realistic. So there are just a few little tweaks that we need to make and we'll go through those right now. Okay, so let's just create a new blank document. So we'll go File, New, and for the size of this, I'm just gonna choose from the document type here the name of the current file we've got open. So it creates as a file that's exactly the same size. So we'll click OK and we get a white background. Now let's just fill that with black. So we'll go to Edit, Fill, and we'll choose uh, black. And then I'm gonna swap around my foreground and background color, so my foreground color is white. Go back to the brushes, and I'll choose one of those new brushes that we've just downloaded and installed here. I'll choose something like 305. Now you can see when I use it straight out of the bag there that when we paint, it doesn't look that realistic. It's all very, very uniform. We need to change that. So let's just create a blank layer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the brush uh, options here. Now we've got loads of brush tip shape, shape dynamic, scattering, texture, and what have you. If I just click on something like brush, uh, so the shape dynamics, and I'm going to bring up the size jitter. So basically every brush stroke that I make, it varies the size of the brush, and we'll take that up to around about 70-ish, something like that. Just play around and choose a, a setting that you like. Uh, I'm also going to change the angle jitter so that with every brush stroke it completely changes the orientation of the brush stroke so again it adds much more randomness to how the smoke looks and then that will help to make it look much more realistic. So there's that one, we'll leave scattering alone because we still want the smoke to be quite tightly compact like it is, but we'll go to transfer and I will play around with something like the opacity. So let's bring up the opacity jitter again around to something like, I don't know, 65, 70 or whatever. Something like that will be fine. Now just by making those few changes, look at the difference in the brush now as we come in, how much more random look to it, like so. So that's how we can now create the smoke. So let's go for a blank layer. Let's again come onto there. Let's do this. Let's bring the opacity of the brush down to 80% and just paint some real random strokes all over the actual uh, layer just there. So you can see now we are getting a really great, realistic looking smoke effect. Now you could use this instead of the one that I did originally on our picture just here, or you could actually start to paint it in the little areas like I did in the final picture, if we just dive over to Lightroom, I actually used that brush just down on the lower part of the picture and up in the top left and top right. But that's just a real quick Two ways to show you how you can create that smoke or fog type effect. I will put a link in the description part of this video so you can download those explosion brushes so that you get the exact right ones. But hey, there you go, that's, uh, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.